All right, so this is section 11.5, alternating series. Okay, uh, so this is a very particular type of a test, you know, because it's alternating. So what it means by a series alternating is just changing in sign. That's pretty much what's it's, it's happening here. Um, so key thing is that the past examples were all positive series, right? So it's all increasing. So this is a, one of the very first ones we'll talk about when it could be negative, right? So it goes back and forth, back and forth, negative, positive, as well as being alternating. Um, so, you know, we're going to have actually negative terms this time itself, okay? So, again, an alternating series test kind of looks like this, where the, the sequence, you know, alternates depending on the value. So, if you plug in one, negative one to the first power is positive, you have a positive number. Plug in um, two, two minus one is one, so negative one times this, right? So, it just alternates back and forth uh, when it comes to it, okay? So, an example will look like this. Right, and just keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and from negative positive, negative positive. That's what we write an alternating. Okay, so this is a very type of uh, particular uh, series test, and this is the only time we're going to be using the alternating series test. If whenever you have a sequence that alternates, or in other words, if it has this at the beginning, you're pretty much going to be using this uh, this test no matter what, which is kind of nice, right? So it's very, very particular. So it only works for a very, very portion of uh, the series as we talked about earlier itself. Okay, so. Going forward, now we have an additional type of series. You know, again, the best part is this will only work if we have this happening, right? You know, it doesn't work for anything else, so it's kind of nice, okay? So if we have an alternating series test, so given like this portion here, where it's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, that satisfies that the, uh, the second, so b sub 1, n minus plus, oh, sorry, b of n plus 1 is less than or equal to b sub n. So in other words, the, um, the next term is smaller than the previous term. So for example, if this is n, right, and this is n plus 1, the next term, notice that this is smaller than this. So that would make sense, right? And it just goes back and forth, back and forth, no matter what, uh, when it comes to it. Okay. So if that works, if that works all the time for any value, so any value we stop at, you know, when it comes to it. And also, if the limit of the sequence without the alternating part equals 0, then the series converges completely. Okay. Now, if we have this happening, however, this is not equal zero, then also it just diverges. You know, that's pretty much the, the consequence of this kind of stuff itself. Okay. And again, the best part is if it's anything besides zero, it automatically diverges. If it's zero exactly, then it converges itself. Okay. Now, if you're wondering, okay, how does this actually work out, right, when it comes to it? So, um, without going into the, like, the full-on theory behind how this works out and the explanation of the, the actual, um, you know, calculus behind it, I'm going to show you a picture of what's actually why this actually ends up being zero, okay? So, b sub one, right, it's just some random number, let's say like it's like five, let's say we start with four, right? So the length of four. So the sum of the first term is called s of one, which is just basically the first term of the sequence, right, b sub one, so like four, okay? So now if I add the second term, so if I add four plus, let's say negative three, well, let's say we, you know, a little easier, let's say start with four, then we go to like negative three, then we go to like positive two and so forth, negative one, like that, right? Just alternates back and forth. So now I'm, sub so here's my first term. So here's my second term. So when I subtract it, right? So when I add these together, right, the sums, yeah, I'm subtracting your first term minus the second term, right? So essentially what's happening is I'm going backwards now. So let's say here, and this is the sum of the two terms together, right? It makes sense because the sum of the first term is four. Now the sum of the two terms together would, let's say, be positive one, right? So I'm going back to, like, say, one, right? Kind of makes sense? So that's, you know, the addition of b sub two, right? It comes back here. So now my the sum of the first three terms, we'll call it s of two now. Notice it goes higher because I start at one because of this sum. Now I add two, that goes up to three. So now the sum of the th three terms We'll go somewhere over here, right? Yeah, obviously, this will be uh, in this case to be um, three, but again, we don't know this is a general uh, application, right? So we keep going. So now, if I add, so this can be adding b sub three, and now if I add b sub four, and take that sum, notice this goes backwards to s of four, and notice this goes back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. It keeps keep going. You add, subtract, add, subtract, add, subtract, add, subtract. And essentially what happens is these uh, these numbers get so close together that this sum ends up being S itself, 
right? Eventually it ends up being one single number once you add them together. Okay. And that's what the process when it comes to limit as zero. So basically after subtracting so much, you know, the you know, after some n value or you know the numbers are just obviously according together, it ends up being zero, that's sum in total. Hence the reason why they would take the sum of all that limit when it comes to it. So that's kind of the concept of you know the basic of what this means. When we're going to the you know the, the complete algebraic and uh, the calculus portion of taking the limits and going through all those individual values itself, that's pretty much what's actually happening here. So like eventually, when you add all of the terms together and because they because they alternate, they go back and forth, back and forth, you end up adding and going back to the, the difference is actually just zero itself, right? When it comes to it. Okay. All right. So hopefully that's a little bit more explanation of what's why this is actually you know why is this true. Again, without going to the, you know, the nitty gritty stuff itself. Okay. So let's try it out so you can see what's actually happening here. Okay. All right, so we're going to test the series convergence and divergence when it comes to these alternating series tests. And again, you know it's alternating because that right there, right? That's the biggest thing itself, right? So first one, check. It does alternate. So check one, right? Satisfies the first condition, check. So therefore, we want to take the limit. Now, we want to take the limit of everything besides the alternating part. So in other words, notice this is B sub n. So B sub n is right here. So it's everything except the alternating part because that doesn't matter when we take the limit itself. Okay. So essentially, that goes away. We're just taking the limit of 1 over n plus 1 you know, inside the square root. And again, it just makes it easier to look at, right? Because if you plug that in, again, eventually in the limit, it doesn't really make sense you know, to do the alternating part because it just actually just goes away once we take that limit. Okay. Okay, so we do this. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Oh, sorry, n equals infinity. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over. I'm going to rewrite this. It's using an ex exponent rule like that. Okay. And hopefully you notice this square looks similar to the one we talked about earlier. And it's one of I told you guys is going to be uh, coming up a lot. And um, this is the p-value, p uh, sorry, p-series test. Right, if you take the limit or the sum of 1 over n to the p value and if p is less than 1 it diverges and if p is greater than 1 it converges and notice here that's the same process we have here this n value is just n plus 1 and this p value is 1 half so since the p value is less than uh, less than 1 it diverges so automatically you know this is going to go 